Good afternoon, everyone, and mabuhay from the Philippines. This is once again Jay Barbo hosting the live interview session with our Bachelor of Malaysia 2020 candidate, Hazanel Harris, all the way from Malaysia. So for today's uh, uh, live session, um, we're going to have some shout outs and also question and answer, uh, getting to know our candidate or guest. By the way, uh, we are live at uh, our YouTube channel and also live at our Facebook page, The Pageant Trend. So if you are new to our channel, so don't forget to click the subscribe button and always, and also click the notification bell so that you will be updated whenever we have a new videos. So let us introduce our guest for this afternoon. And I know he's very excited to meet us. Uh, let us all welcome Mr. Hassan Al Harris from Malaysia. Hi, Hassan Al. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. I hope you can hear me. It's my connection is really bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hi. Yes, we can hear you. We can hear you. So again, our guest is having a hard time to having some technical problems when yeah. it, it comes with his internet connection. The problem okay. is there you have it. So please introduce yourself, Hasano. Let me Okay, introduce yourself. Hasanel? Hello? Please introduce yourself. I'm just, <laughs> sorry, hello? Yes, I can hear you. Please introduce, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Hasanel Harris. I'm one of the... Okay. You can speak. Yeah, I'm one of the finalists of um, Bachelor of Malaysia. Okay, so there you have it. So before we move on to our I think... live interview, yes, before we move on to our live interview session, so we have our shout out to our viewers first. So our first viewer is Dev Dalu. Good morning. I think it's from Indo India. Thank you for watching Dev Dalu and also watching Rosel Aviera. Good afternoon, Paul. Yeah, Good I think it's from uh, Indonesia, I think, or Philippines. Good mm -hmm. afternoon, Paul. Good afternoon. And also watching Roy Good Benson afternoon. Solina. Good afternoon. Roy Benson Solina. Then, yeah. How okay, are you? So are you? Have, Roy Benson. We have also Emmanuel Garcia watching. Thanks Hello so there, nice. Mr. Hassanel. Please give me a shout out. Hello there, Mr. Hassan. Please give a shout out for that. And also, Halil um, Pagdana. Hi. So we have Winston Saripa Al Sola. Good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay. So we have also viewers from our YouTube channel from Marilu from Panizal. Hello, good afternoon, guys. Good afternoon, good afternoon. also Marilu. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to share our live session for this afternoon. And I hope you're you're all okay. So we have from Maria D. Elorde. Good, hello, good afternoon. Elorde, good afternoon. I actually learned Tagalog like when I was in university. I mm -hmm. yeah. I <laughs> I think I can practice my Tagalog um like a little bit, I guess. Hi there, good afternoon. 
Hai, kamusta? Kamusta kana pa? Kamusta? Kamusta. Kamusta. And also Ronel Waga Sablay. Hi Ronel, what's up? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, so there you have it. Uh for the meantime, I, so let's move myself. on to our Let's move on to our interview session. So, who is Hazan Al Haris first? So basically, I am um, one of the finalists of Bachelor of Malaysia, and it's 2020 this year. And I didn't expect to be one of the finalists. And I would like to thank you, Jill, my manager, for um, selecting selecting me to be um, the top in the top 20, top 15. I don't remember how many of us actually. Mm-hmm. Then, so once again, our guest is having a hard time. So, um, so I guess go to the Hello. gym. Uh-huh. Can you guys hear me? Yes, 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 we can hear you. Go on. Yeah. And um, I, I think like, um, mm-hmm. I think I'm the um, one of the oldest of the um, Bachelor of Malaysia among all the boys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm 32 and um, yeah, I'm actually quarter Malaysian. My dad, um, actually my grandma is uh, Malaysian. So probably a lot of you guys are asking like how I actually joined um, Bachelor of Malaysia since I'm Bruneian. Uh, actually the competitions itself, it allows people who um, have heritage as in um, family background, Malaysian family background. And um, my grandma just happened to, not just happened, she was um, Sarawakian. So that's how I managed to be in the competition. Okay, so next question. When and why did you enter the world of male pa- male beauty pageant? Honestly, like, um, I never thought that I would join because I, <laughs> mm-hmm. I think like, this is something new for me, to be honest. And I actually almost joined um, a bodybuilding competition, which is sports model, but I never thought about like going to pageant. So why do I want to join and what got me to join? It's because um, I think I want to gain experience. Like I often watch a lot of like things like um, Miss Universe and all that and how they do charity and how they do, you know, like um, helping people so I guess like, why does it always have to be just be women? I think men could actually start and do something similar to them. So I think like this would allow me and give me opportunities to, to try something like what they do. I think that would be interesting. It's not just about like being um, good looking or like being all that, but I think pageant as well, it's about how you connect to the community, to the people, yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you so much. So before we move on, um, guys, if you have questions to our guests for this afternoon, you may comment down below and then uh, so that we, you can be also shout out with our guests. Okay, so moving on. My next question is, how do you prepare for the international competition? And also, what do you need to work on the most? Um, I think like aside from physical appearance, as in like um, working out, you know, like um, physically um, fit, um, I think that is one of the requirements. Um, I think you would have to be, um, you'd have to know what's going on around the world as well, as in what's going on, um, like social issues, the world issues basically, like it's not just about like being good looking and staying on, on stage, but I think it's really important as well to know what's going on around you. So what I have been prepared other than like going to gym, I think I did tell you earlier on, mm-hmm. um, I actually been doing a lot of 
readings. Um, of course, like it's my job as a media lecturer, I'm always updated with like what's going on. And like every time when I start my lecture, I would actually like ask my students like what's what's happening in America, what's happening in Asia kind of thing. So I think that's the important thing, like knowing what's going on and not just being good looking. So I think I've been doing a lot of reading and knowing what's going on around the world, I guess. <laughs> All right. So what do you think is your edge or advantage to to the other uh, candidate? I think the fact that like um, I'm quite older than them, <laughs> mm -hmm. I think that would be um, I think an advantage that I sort of like experience more than them sort of thing. Like because I see a lot of them are still young and I think like a lot of them are like my students age they're like 21 25 although like some of them are like um, working already but majority of them are quite young so mm -hmm. i think like in terms of like experience i think that would be a different um an advantage for me yeah so i don't know like how we could actually meet one day and exchange like what i don't know like what they don't experience that i experience so i think that would be uh, something new for me but like and uh, since i'm older than them I think education background, I mean, since I, you know, completed my studies earlier than them and majority of them like still studying, I think that will be um, a different, I think a lot of things will be on a different perspective. All right. So you have mentioned that you were a lecturer by profession. So what do you want, what do you want to share with the youth or to the youth? I think like, I think like, honestly, like, um, right now, like social media actually has been like really, um, really just, I mean, everyone's just active on social media. I think it's just because um, everyone's like, you know, staying at home and trying to be safe. And you know, like how people are active on TikTok or like Facebook, mm -hmm. Instagram. So I think like young people, like as much as like you wanna, you know, like stay connected and all that, like you want to be careful with like what you share and what you say as well because it like especially like right now like anything could just be shared and like anything could just be indirectly like uh you could be indirectly like thought as in like mm -hmm. someone could just like be sharing you anything and you know things that just might be wrong or anything like that so young people social media it's really unavoidable but they gotta have to be careful, especially like right now, everyone's stuck at home. Everyone's going online. Everyone's just on, you know, like Instagram, TikTok, whatever, but just be careful. All right. What do you, what do you expect from the international competition and uh, the contestants as well? Oh, really? from them? <laughs> <laughs> I cannot wait to meet them, to be honest. Cause like, um, I know quite a number of them are very much um, very fit. Um, I think they're listening right now. If you do, <laughs> I hope we could actually meet. We could train together and we could share like, you know, like how basically a lot of them are very much fit. So what I'm looking forward to meet with them is, of course, it's not just, you know, like training together, but as well as like things that I don't know about. Some of them are quite experienced. They have joined like um, competition before as in bodybuilding. They also have joined like pageant and and they also like quite active in um, commercials as well in the modeling world. So I think that would be um, a good time for me to get to know them and you know share things basically okay well do you think being handsome will get you far in life or get the crown or one of the title of bachelor of malaysia 2020 <laughs> oh my i was talking about this to my friends <laughs> just a few days ago like how being attractive just like so important to some people. I mean, to some extent, yes. Like, if you actually won the title and like people know you as like, oh, he's the finalist or like he's like one of the top five, I think mm -hmm. um, it does important and it does make an impact to you. But at some point, I think um, what's it, what's important is like oh, what you have other than like what you look, like what you do to people. So it goes back to my point earlier on. 
that when you actually get to this, that you want to like connect with people, you want to make connections, you want to make an impact to the society sort of thing. And uh, you want to make um, changes that possible or things that could make someone's life change. So, because like being good looking or like being having a six pack or having a good biceps is not going to last you forever. Because they're going to shrink anyway and I'm not. <laughs> I'm much <laughs> I might be small one day, but the impact that I'm going to have to uh, the people, that, that is what counts. So I think I want to do that a lot. Like when I actually, if I want the title, basically, I want to make like uh, the people that I help or people that I connect with happy and proud. You know, it's not just in Brunei, uh, Malaysia as well, even in the Philippines. Okay, yeah. so when was... When is the final of Bachelor of Malaysia 2020? It was supposed to be last um, last few months, but because you know COVID nineteen, so it got post postponed. And it was supposed to be a few months ago as well, like November, but like again, it is extended. So we don't know. Probably like early next year, but we'll definitely keep you guys updated on um, the date itself. But it will be in um, Kota Kinabalu, which is in Sabah, Malaysia. Okay. What makes you the most proud of your home country? Oh, is it like Brunei? Yes. And also Malaysia. <laughs> okay. Well, I let's think start like, with Brunei. Okay. For Brunei, <laughs> for Brunei I think like uh, what I'm proud the most about Brunei is um, the people here are very much um, friendly, I think, like in a way that like because we, we're very small, so everyone tends to like know each other. Mm -hmm. So we tend to like um, know, like if we go out, like we tend to like say hi and like we tend to be friendly and like wave, things like that. Because like um, it's not a bad thing. Because like when I go to um, Malaysia sometimes, the thing that I do in Brunei, it's not really practiced. Like whenever like, I go out from the junctions, I usually like wave my hand, say it's as if I'm saying thank you. But they don't really do that. So like in Brunei, even like you go out, like when you do that, someone does um, does it back to you, kind of thing. So it's like pe the people here are very much like small, and everyone seems to like know each other. So yeah, the friendliness of the people here, basically. From Malaysia, I think they are very much um, diverse in so many things. As in, like I like the fact that like how this is just my personal point of view. Like mm -hmm. how people would just like go into Indian restaurant or like Chinese restaurant, as in like different ways would just go into literally would just go in and eat. Of course, like Malay people would have to make sure the food is halal, but like the the, the idea that they are very much interested to try different food and go into a different restaurant, knowing that it's not their food that they have every day, I think that's what makes it interesting, and that's usually happens in a lot in Malaysia. I'm not saying like Brunei are very picky when going out to going into a restaurant, <laughs> but yeah, that's just what I see. Okay, so what accompli what accomplishment are you most proud of, and why? Accomplishments. Um, what sort of accomplishments? It's a accomplishment. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it counts, like. When I was in university, like, I actually, like, save up a lot of, like, because I get allowance. And I save up my allowance to, like, to spend, to travel myself. So I think, like, that's one of the accomplishments that I actually don't forget. You know, like, when you get your allow allowance and then you travel on your own, you know, and you're still young kind of thing. I think, like, so far up until today, I don't actually think so much that I accomplished it in education and okay malaysia maybe mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> so aside from uh being a lecturer um what do you do in life um other than like um being a lecturer i also go often to gym and i read a lot of books um i actually um train people but i haven't actually started training people i do get like people asking like oh uh, maybe you could start like train me and stuff like that i'm sure other participants as well like you know get this a lot on social media and do online 
um, training. So I actually look forward to do that. Uh, I, although I used to train people, but I'm planning to do it maybe next year, see how it goes, if I could actually manage my time. Other than like um, personally doing PT, I do, um, of course, I read a lot of books and story books. I like reading all these um, non-fictions and fictions and um, sharing them with my students. Although some of them actually not into books, they're more into videos and, you know, technology and stuff. But yeah, it's fun. Okay, so how do you often uh, go to gym? How often do I go to gym? Yes. Okay, honestly, honestly, I think my friends are watching right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think my mom, um, I actually it's five days or six days, six out of seven, six days a week. Okay. And if I'm really, really lazy, although I said like I'm on rest day, I think my friends all know, I think my followers all know as well, I will still be going out for a walk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so six out of seven, I try to keep fit basically. Yeah. That's great. Okay, what is your favorite way to stay in shape? What's that? Favorite way to stay in sh shape? Uh, my in favorite health fitness. As weight, as in like W E I G H T. No, um, way, W A Y. Favorite w way to stay in shape. Like do you you go to gym, and then what what what's your favorite part of oh, the program? This one, yeah, it's my legs. <laughs> your legs, okay. It's all my legs. <laughs> uh -huh. I realized that like when I first, um, when I first started gym, I train a lot of my legs, and um, I think that is one of the things that. I'm actually proud of, to be honest, because I do know that like, <laughs> I mean, no offense to anyone, um, people don't really like to do legs because the legs are just difficult and it's painful. But I'm glad that I started off with, you know, doing so much of legs and I'm still, you know, like doing it up until today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think it's squat lunges and all that, like hex squat, it's what I'm actually um, looking forward to every time when I train, even today actually so wait for my instagram post it's mm -hmm. gonna be like <laughs> we're looking forward for that <laughs> yeah and i know um some of them are excited to see it <laughs> okay so moving on describe yourself in three words um in three words i strong um secondly sensitive and three. Mm -hmm. I think loving. I'm very much loving person. Okay, so are you still single? Single. Yeah, I am still single. So keep the direct message coming. <laughs> <laughs> so accept it. single and ready to mingle, right? <laughs> yes, single. Let's go. Okay, so next. Why do you want to win this pageant? Why do I want to win this pageant? Um, again, again, as I said like, earlier on, how how the fact that like I could, this is like an um, you know, an access to the people um, that that I could connect with as in like organizations and stuff like that. I mean, I do, can I, I, I can actually get, I can actually give help to people, but like having to be under um, Bachelor of Malaysia and the fact that like I could connect myself to people, um, I think that will be one of the main reason that I think I really want to win this. And of course, I want to um, make my, Make my uh, make my mom proud, because um, before she left us, um, she did say a lot of things like how I always work out and like 
you know so i want to make like something that like worth that why i'm always working out why i'm always eating like a lot of chicken in the kitchen so like aside from like going to this pageant because of fitness and i want to make changes to the community to the people i also want to um, get experience for myself and see how it feels like to be you know to be there for the people like to to help people basically like to be to be there i think like katrina what, what's her name again katriona yeah it's got great. yeah yeah, yeah. I, I often see her a lot like on youtube like how she just like help people and i'm like oh my god she's just so pretty and like, she's just like so so um yeah so nice and she helps a lot of people so she just make me realize it's not just about being pretty but it's about how you make an impact to people yeah that's great yeah okay next uh, who is your role model my role model would be um petra Bos bosali mm -hmm. yeah so um petra bosali basically it's um he's one of my or he's one of yeah one of my idols basically like in terms of education in terms of like fitness in terms of like modeling as well he actually like um started as a lecturer and um how he goes from being a lecturer and he started off modeling and um, he goes with um like aside from his modeling world he's still doing his research and all that so that's what actually um keeps me going like motivates me basically yeah okay if you could meet uh, any person in history who would it be if i could meet anyone in history mm -hmm. Whoa. Who would it be? That's hard. <laughs> <laughs> Who would I want to It could see? be either a um, hero, a hero, a president or celebrity, a beauty queen or a king. I think I would want to, um, I think I would want to meet my grandparents basically mm -hmm. you know like i actually hear a lot of stories from my dad from my mom like how my grandparents basically are like so helpful to people you know like i would love to meet them and like spend time with them i guess i know it's very sensitive and like it's very emotional but i think it's i think yeah they are like one of the people that i would like to meet and like spend time with basically <laughs> thanks okay. celebrity to have as well but like right now i think it's more like i think my grandparents yeah okay so what will be the first thing you eat after the pageant whoa <laughs> the boys are like probably scratching their head too i think doing dieting and like training so hard Honestly, I think if I'm done with the competition, I mean, although I have it right now, I think all this junk food like burger from KFC, um, you know, KFC, McDonald's and all that, like I know, like once I start, um, when I, once I start um, competing the competitions itself, I know I have less of food in my head. So I think all the junk food definitely Although right now I've been having a lot of chicken rice. I'm not sure if you guys actually like have chicken rice, like roasted chicken in the Philippines. Yeah. So have, you so, been, have you been um, here in the Philippines? I've been. Salmaka. Where? Where where was that? I was in an exchange program. I don't remember the place. It was actually quite interesting because the thing is that like I again I learned Tagalog and they were talking um, in Tagalog and they thought that I couldn't understand. So they were actually playing where to take me, what to actually have for dinner. And suddenly like I just literally like burnt out in Tagalog and they're like, Talaga? Really? Like how do you learn Tagalog? And then I just said Nak Aral Akusa, Universidad Todito sa Brunei. And they're like, Wow, galing, galing. <laughs> oh you you're you're fluent in Tagalog. I think it's like uh, Tagalog is like one of the languages here that's what mm -hmm. we talk about. I mean, like 
aside from aside from komusta what what else do you know about uh tagalog word word tagalog i was, I, I was gonna ask you um san pangalanan mo saan sa provincia mo ano ang ano ang trabaho mo like kumakain ka you know <laughs> yes we know that <laughs> It seems like you're a Filipino, right? Because you're like, fluent in speaking Tagalog. I can't. People <laughs> always ask like, if I'm Chinese Filipino or like Chinito. I yes, say, like, uh, it looks like uh, chi uh, Chinese. Do you have a uh, racial? Mm, no, I don't. So only Brunei and Malaysia, right? Sorry, what's that? from Brunei. Your mother is from? Yeah, my mother is from here. Like, I, I, I get that a lot, like, on Instagram, like, how do you look so different? Like, what's your race? Are you mixed and stuff? Yeah. Okay, so next question. What do you think is the biggest problem facing young people today? What's the um, problem that most young people face these days. Yeah. I think like the idea that they do not want to be controlled. They don't want to be to be told what to do. In a sense that like when they decide things themselves, they would rather like have themselves to do it than like being told by their parents. So I think like it's also again, I'm not trying to, um, you know, like condemn on technology. But I think it's one of the reasons as well because the technology itself has been so advanced, and you know, like they think that the things, the things that they decide for themselves. Um, I think it's mostly um, get influenced so much from the social media and all that. So I think like majority of them, like it's good that they be independent and decide things for themselves. But to some extent, like they still have to like um get to you know like listen to their parents or their guardian or anyone who's basically um other than them and other than that like young people as well these days it's not just about like how they much how they are much influenced by technology as in um, the world of media but i think they are also um they're also yeah, they're just young and they want to experience things, basically. I mean, I get a lot of um, attitudes from different students every time. And sometimes that's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. If you could give your, your younger self one piece of advice, what would that be? I should have just done it. I should have just like do whatever I wanted to do. But I don't know why like, I didn't do it at all. So Hassanal should have done it. <laughs> okay, next. Yeah. Why do you think that people have a negative image of pageantry? Just like well, think, yeah. for, for the male pageant. Let's talk about for the male pageant. I think like for the male pageant is mostly the fact that like you know, like how people would have this um, understanding of like, oh, pageant is only for women, it's not for men, you know, and they never thought that men would actually have a pageant, basically. So, yeah, just the idea of pageant, I think they'll see it more like it's a woman thing, it's a feminine thing, and men would better be going for, again, like bodybuilding competition it's not more like you know like what i just said earlier on like um what miss universe does like swimwear and like talking about social issues and all that you know and about just being good looking and all that there's more than just that so the understanding it's some people that have a limited understanding so yeah okay so have you have you experienced criticism uh when joining the pageant and how did you handle it? Well, honestly, like things that I get asked a lot um, is basically about like how I'm not being 
pure Malaysian, basically. Yeah, and um, like this year edition, basically, it's um, it's open for um, non-Malaysian. If you actually notice, I think you did interview Simon, and um, there's this guy named Sam as well. They're not Malaysian, basically, and yeah, like I do get criticism because of not being Malaysian, but other than that, like so far, like I don't get so much. Yeah, so I'm not. I'm not saying I look forward for the criticism. I hope not, but mm -hmm. the fact that like yeah, because it's Bachelor of Malaysia and people started to question. But again, um, we already clarified it's um, it's special edition. We allow non Malaysian to join as well. So I hope like everyone um, who's still asking, who's still thinking, like why is this Malaysia? You know, like why, you know, like this you know, Indonesian or like Brunei are joining as well. So I just understand that this is a special edition. So it's open for non-Malaysia as well. Okay. So what would you say to someone that says pageantry degrades? Degrades as in, as in like not good. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think again, like they don't have, they have limited understanding of what pageant is. Again, as I said, like they think it as like Miss World. They see, they see it as like, um, you know, like those old women on stage. They don't really have um, understanding of like it's more than just being in the bikini and like good looking. Because the thing is, like what I learned myself as well, the fact that like how they make impact to the society, how they connect themselves, basically, how they make changes to the society. That's actually very much beautiful. So I get an understanding of like, like I myself, to be honest, like initially I thought like, oh, it's just being pretty. But come to think about it, after I get followed by a lot of pageants on my Instagram, then I see like, oh, you know, like they do charity. Oh, they do connect with people. Oh, they do want to know what's going on. So it's not just about like being pretty, you know, being good looking, having six pack. So how, why people degrade that? I guess obviously because they don't know. So they assume that it's a bad thing and it's just about being pretty because they, they decide not to understand if that makes sense. Because if they try and understand, it's more than just being good looking and pretty. They will actually see the beautiful, um, the beautiful inside of um, the pageants itself. Not just about having six pack, it's about having a brain as well. And that's what's important. All right, so very nice answer. Thank you so much. So have you ever been bullied? Have you been bullied? Yeah, of course, I have been bullied because um, Back in school, like how I look pale. Actually, I tried to tan. I, I'm not sure if it works, but I do have like lines. <laughs> I <laughs> actually get bullied because I look different. And um, my name, my name, my family's name, because um, my family's name, basically we use uh, English names and we always get asked by our teachers, like, why do we have English names? And like, why do we look different? You know, um, yeah, things like that. And like, we always like get, but it's very much um, handled like, you know, you're young and, you know, kids are being kids and they just see you different. They just call you different names and things like that. But I guess it's not really a big deal. Like, I mean, as you grow up, you understand. But it just happened when you in in high school or in primary school. They just don't understand. Okay. So since you were joining the Bachelor of Malaysia 2020, so can you tell us more about your advocacy or any platform platform as in like what is your purpose of joining the bachelor of malaysia so what do yeah. you want to yeah so no. okay yeah so basically like um ever since i joined bachelor of malaysia like i do have my concerns and things that i want to get myself involved in um, like, I know it might not be something new, um, cause I really, I didn't mention this earlier on and a lot of my followers probably know about me that I like cats. I love cats and I have my cats or 
just one cat. His name is Jagger, basically. So I want to make like, I would take this opportunity to basically like help all the stray cats, you know, even dogs as well, if possible, to make people aware of this. It's not just about like helping people, but having the fact that like helping animals, that thing that would be um, um, make changes, obviously. And um, as a teacher myself, since I teach media and languages in English, I will also like to um, teach young people who do not uh, know how to read English, especially in pronunciations and all that. And mm -hmm. of course, um, I would also like to take the opportunity to, um, to connect with um, people who, who are, in terms of fitness, people who think that they do not have um, you know how people are just giving up like, I don't I can't do sports I can't do anything because I'm just like weak I'm just skinny or I'm just too big or anything like that so I want to make that mentality change as well like I want get I want to get them like fit and I hope I can do this like with other boys as well you know that sort of thing so this mm -hmm. special I think it's like an access like a door for me to like to go through to this like um yeah future plans basically like there's actually right. more, but that's just what I can think of. Okay. So is social media bringing people together or causing separation? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Almost, to be honest, like it does connect, it does separate. Come to think about it, like how it was 20 years ago, people do not have Facebook, Instagram, people could still connect. I'm sure you remember like how people would just talk on the phone. So yes, to some extent, it does separate people, but again, at the same time, it does connect people as well. So it depends on like how you use it. Okay. If you could have the powers of any superhero, what would it be? Wow. I think what I would want is probably, like I could, what would you call that? Like one of those X-Men X -Men, um, X -Men actors, the one that I can actually like read your mind kind of thing, like telepath. Yes. Yeah. Like the one tell who you like who can read mind. Yeah. Would that not be interesting? Other than like, you know, power, eyes or whatever. I don't know. This just me maybe. I can read your minds and I can tell you like what to do. Wouldn't that be scary? Maybe. I don't know. Okay. If I were a genie in a bottle and could grant Whoa. you my one wish, what would that be? Like you would be the genie and you would yeah. grant me. I'm going to grant you one wish only. So what would that be? <laughs> okay, it's um I think like on that day that I last um met my mom. Yeah. So I would actually like take her out and spend more time with her. Because mm -hmm. that day I actually left the house and I did like talk to her. And when I get when I get home that night, I didn't get. But the fact that I get to talk to her, that was beautiful, and that was very much memorable. But and again, if you ask me, I think I would want to have more time, like maybe like morning. I would even have to go out. Maybe I would just like bring her out, sit next to her, and talk about things. Yeah. Okay. So, another question: What is your biggest fear? Fear in life. Fear in life, fear in life would probably be, I don't know, I think I find it hard to like lose people that I love, I think. Okay. Yeah, losing people that I love. Do you have a hidden talent? <laughs> hidden talent? Yes. Aside from um, teaching young people, I do think you know like how I, talent? Um, do you know how to dance, sing, beatboxing, joke? <laughs> <laughs> I think like I, I think I learn, I learn really fast. The fact that I can learn language really fast, I think that's like one of my talents, multilingual. Yeah. That's good. We are also multilingual, just like the Filipino. 
Oo, oh, oh, sa DP to, kayo. <laughs> <laughs> Oo, oh, maganda. Salamat po, ikaw po. <laughs> Okay. So if given a chance, um, let us say uh, you win one of the title or one of the crown, a Bachelor of Malaysia 2020. So how do you handle the responsibility of the crown or the title on the top of your job? Okay, Family I'll... or marriage? Sorry, what's that? How will you handle the responsibilities of the crown or title on the top of your job, family, and marriage? Just in case you won. Um, I'll definitely, because I did talk about this to um, my dad as well as my colleague. I, um, I would actually have to see like how it goes. I mean, of course, like I would have um, commitments that I have to, you know, I would have to prioritize as in like my family and my job. But mm -hmm. whatever it is, um, I'll do my best to to protect, if that's the word, the title. And of course, uh, obviously, like what I do, like, you know, like it's, it's gonna be tough, but I think like how I would manage my priority, I think my priority, I think that will probably help. Okay. If you could visit any place in the world, where would you go? except from Malaysia and also Brunei in their place. So any other country would you like to visit? I actually wanna go to, oh my, I have a lot. <laughs> I have a lot of lists. But I think if I were to choose, probably I would actually go to Iceland, I think. Mm -hmm. Iceland. How about from the Philippines? Of course, it's more fun in the Philippines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Philippines, of course. The thing is, I get to just visit there once and I really want to come back and meet my um, my followers, basically. They would love to bring me out and like try food and see their culture. I like like how they you know, like how they talk to me and chat with me in, in, in Tagalog. And I think like if I stay a little bit longer in the Philippines, I think I could, you know, get more fluent with my Tagalog. Although, although I want to show you a bit of experience. I was in Green City, if that's what you call it. Mm -hmm. I was down local. I, I, I talked to them in Tagalog. And they're talking to me back in Visaya. Mm -hmm. And Visaya, then yeah. Yeah. I think so. And then they're like, oh, why don't you understand? Like, they assume that, like, I have not been to the Philippines, like, Filipino who actually been migrated abroad, basically. And I'm like, oh, I was trying to, like, bargain the price of something. So mm -hmm. I think I would have to learn a lot of, like, slangs and, like, some of the things that, like, local people use when they talk. So, yes, definitely Philippines, though. I want to go back to the Philippines and just meet up with my friends. I know I have a lot of like, you know, Filipino friends there. I know you're listening right now. I miss you guys. And um, I want to meet you as well, like you as well. <laughs> I guess just Thank see you. you. I'm also looking forward to. Yeah, try all this like food, bring it on. And I should be, you know, like done with the competition and let's just eat whatever that is there. <laughs> yes, so what, what is your favorite food here in the Philippines? I, I like this um, one place. I don't remember the fact that like I could add more rice. I think it's called Inasal. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ma Inasal. Yeah. Ma Inas so it's nice. more more in only rice. So it yeah. you eat a lot of rice? Well, it depends. This is the thing, like carbs though. <laughs> <laughs> like chicken rice, to be honest, like you always have to have it with rice. Inasal is like one of my options and the fact that like I could add more, I was just like surprised that I could stand up and get more. And I'm like, wow, this is cool. <laughs> yeah, like Inasal. Maybe I haven't really tried other um, local food. So maybe you can bring me when I'm back to the Philippines. Sure. How about Sinigang? Sinigang na baboy. 
ano, anong sinigaw? Baboy. So it's just ba- like sour, tastes sour. Spicy, di ba? Yes, there's also spicy. Bring it on. I would love to try. Sure, okay. Have, um, yeah, a proper uh, Filipino restaurant here. But yeah, I, I still tell my parents, like my foster parents, trying to like bring us to a local food. And mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but it's not really a local, local food because I think like we arrived there like quite midnight. And the next day we're like busy popping. So we didn't get to try like local food. So I hope the next time when I'm back, I get to try like all this, you know, like food that I never tried. Okay, so I have another question. What is, what in your opinion is the difference between a boy and a man? Okay, um, if I were to differentiate like boy and a man, I would actually differentiate them like as how when they, when they decide on things. Like boy would actually, you know like how some men act like a boy they would just decide or they make decisions out of like their yeah, out of reason i think mm-hmm. like boy would be like very much naive like would just be indecisive men would be like much experience and like they sort of like um they would think before they say although some men are like boys they don't know when they decide things if that makes sense so yeah Okay, so next. Why do you think male pageants are getting more popular in Malaysia? Why? Yes. Why do you think male pageants are getting more popular? I think like uh, male pageants have been, um, it has been like very much, it's, it's been like um, a platform to um, to be the industry. I think it's not just being in industry, like getting themselves like to connect with people. That's just like what I think. Yeah, like a platform. That's why like I think it's, and the fact that like, um, mm-hmm. wait, let me see. Yeah, it's not just um, pageant being as a platform for most Malaysian, so they would want to join. But I think the fact that like how this pageant itself have connect them with a lot of opportunities, like jobs, you know? Okay. Yeah. Next. As a beauty king, you can use your title to make difference. In what field would you use your title and make a difference and tell us something more about it. Sorry? As a beauty king, you can use your title to make a difference. In what field would you use your title and make a difference and tell us more something about it? If I were to um, make a difference, if I were to have that, so it's more or less the same as like having a power to change something if I were to have a supernatural power. Mm-hmm. I think I would have to, I would actually make like everyone, see everyone as like equal and um, basically have everyone as equal, like human rights basically. Like we don't judge people based on their skin. You know, I would love to like, make that different like that that thought that mentality to people like regardless of like where you're from what color of your skin what language you speak or what your religion is basically we're all the same and we should respect each other regardless of where we're coming from if that's... what about okay okay so what about hazanal in 10 years how do you see yourself how do i see myself oh my mm-hmm. In the Philippines, <laughs> <laughs> having my papaya juice. <laughs> <laughs> you you always uh, love this to go here in the Philippines. What is the main reason why you want to go in the Philippines? I have just like very apart, much apart from having more friends here. There, 
you know, like I when I first like get to um, go for like exchange program, the first country that I always like talk and connect it's always from the Philippines. Oh, you, you speak Tagalog? How do you learn Tagalog? Oh, what do you know about Tagalog? And so open to me. So I'm like. Why have I always just been to the Philippines once? Like, and I do have you know Filipino friends a lot. You know, like how I always like make friends with like um, waitress and waiter in the soup in the grocery store, or even like um, some of the worker here basically are from the Philippines. And like some of my friends are like, okay, he's gonna like show off that he can speak Tagalog. You know things like that so i think i want to go back to the philippines and make use of my language and make friends and see what it goes how it goes so in 10 years time going back to your question i think i would love to probably have a house in a different country and um going back and forth obviously like maybe maybe i hope so that like if i could you know like build a house in the philippines anywhere sa manila or so uh, whatever in the in the Philippines, that'll be great. That's how I see myself. Probably, obviously, I would have to have one in Malaysia. You know, like I don't just settle down here. Since like, um, yeah, I think that'll be nice. I think you would want that as well, don't you? Like you would have a house there, and you can just go there. Correct. It's just yeah. for a vacation, also. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's have some fast talk. <laughs> okay, so first question, would you rather trade some intelligence for looks or looks for intelligence? Very good question. I always get this a lot as well. People would always say, okay, the reality is people would always go for looks. If you're not good looking, people wouldn't look at you. If you're good looking, obviously, and that is like for men, usually like, usually like, they would look on your status, how you look, obviously, what car you drive. But come to think about it, like really like really deep into it, the character of the person is more important. I mean, it does to some extent important that how the person looks, but no matter like how good looking that person is, if they are just not having a good attitude, like, um, yeah, it's not gonna be worth it. So I think, I know some people would just say, ah, he's lying. But I think, you know, intelligence is more important than like looks. Because right. it's you gonna waste time with like someone who's just good looking, but not knowing what they talk about, not knowing what to decide for themselves. No. Yeah. Okay, so next. Okay, so once again, hello. Yeah, yeah, so, I'm here. Okay, next question. If everything in your house had to be one color, what would you choose? <laughs> I like like black, like white and gray. I think like people know me with that color. But if I were to change, I wouldn't change black, obviously. I think white. I would go with white. Okay. Would you rather have unlimited sushi for life or unlimited tacos for life? Unlimited what? Sushi or what? Sushi and tacos for life. Sushi. Okay. If you had a warning label, what would yours say? Sorry, what's that? Warning level. Label. What would you say? I don't, what I don't know. As label in. warning. Just for example, um, don't go or don't swim. It's very dangerous. So what? What's yours? Don't smoke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's that's a great answer. Next. Don't, don't vape. No, no, no. <laughs> yes, that's that's a very great answer. So we should take care of our health, right? Yeah, of course. Okay, so next. Would you rather go 30 days without your phone or your entire life without dessert? <laughs> <laughs> I 
I can try in one month without my phone though, because I did that. I mean, I do still have my phone, but I don't connect to people. If that count, if that counts. So yeah. Okay. Who or where would you hunt if you were a ghost? E oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> But I would hunt, ha! Huh? Oh my, who would I wanna go after? Oh, obviously the people that have been bad to me. <laughs> but no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna like stay on my own and let people be scared. I'm not gonna chase after people. <laughs> If they find me, okay, wow. Okay, if you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? My friends probably be listening. It's chicken rice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next. What would be the worst movies sequel ever made? I know. Worst movie sequel. Oh. Ever I don't really. Wait, let me see. What's the recent one that I watch? I don't know the. I don't really know because like I've been like watching Netflix and um, the ones that I watch myself it is what I think is interesting. The ones that I don't I know that is bad. I know I can think of. I'm sorry. It's okay, no problem. Okay. Have you ever worn clothing with the labels or tags still attached? Sorry, what's that? Have you ever worn Clothing with the labels or tags still attached. <laughs> yeah, when I was in New York, mm -hmm. I actually because um, my friend told me that like I could try and take photos with the jacket, and then I did. It was in Uniqlo, so like I forgot that I actually had to like put it in. So mm -hmm. the tag like literally like out, and like yeah. people like. And I'm just like walking so confident, like nothing is like there. Mm. And my friends like, Sana, like you know, there, like put it there. <laughs> so yeah, that was one of the embarrassing moments. I literally was just like walking um, at the Brooklyn Bridge, and I was wearing the jacket from Uniqlo, and mm -hmm. I did. I forgot totally that the label was still out. Okay, so we have. Okay, so we have one last question. Before we end of this live session, if you were a woman or a woman for a day, what would be the first thing you will do? Wow, I think my girlfriends are all excited right now. I, <laughs> but I would do. <laughs> yes. Let me see what I would want to do. Lashes. Because <laughs> like how my girlfriends are always like coming to work with like, oh, I have like. I just got this one done, and it's like, does it look natural? It should get it done, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> so yes, I think if I were to be a woman for one day, I think I would definitely just one thing. I think my lashes first. <laughs> You're going to fix our lashes, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So any um, word. Of encouragement, words of encouragement to our viewers and also to your supporters okay, from all so, over the world. Yeah, so basically, um, I know a lot of us are mostly trying to stay safe and, you know, like trying to. I know a lot would want to travel as well. Everyone wants to go out, but I think, like, um, as much, still want to like protect yourself protect the people around you, um, all this like, um, I mean, I'm thankful that Brunei has, you know, like zero case and stuff like that. So wherever you are in the world, like try to keep yourself safe and try to like always clean yourself, like wash your hands and take a shower as much as you can. And like, don't, you know, just don't go out if you think, you know, it's just not so important. And yeah, I think that is, To what's going on right now, and for um, for my followers or my supporters for Bachelors Malaysia, the date has not been confirmed yet, but that doesn't mean you stop supporting us. 
Um, the date will be announced definitely. So let's just hope uh, everything goes back to normal by early next year. And um, yeah, like watch us live basically. And if you could go to, if you actually have the ticket and watch us live, that would be better. So keep supporting us and um, please, please, please um, stay safe and um, drink a lot of water and try to do a bit of like exercise. I know you can't do exercise at, in the gym, but like try to do it at home, home exercise, try to eat clean, try to drink a lot of water, stay fit basically, and stay clean obviously. And um, yeah, just look forward to see you guys um, when traveling is possible again. And I hope to see you guys in the Philippines, in Indonesia, Thailand, Malaysia, wherever you are. Um, I would love to meet you guys in person one day. So thank you for the support and thank you for coming online and um, for my Bruneian friends or anyone that are, who are watching this. Um, thank you for supporting me. I know like things have very much difficult. We cannot travel, but again, we're doing this for the better thing for the for a good cause. So um, yeah, same thing. Stay fit, drink a lot of water, and yeah. How about your promote your social media account? Oh like my media Instagram, Facebook page, YouTube account. My, yeah. So my Facebook actually it has been inactive for quite a while. I don't know what's really going on right now. It has been like a lot of requests, which I'm just. I'm, I'm just like surprised because it has been really inactive, but things have been just like going on and on. So thank you for following me. Uh, I'll be accepting it soon. And my Instagram is Hasnal Harris. I know it doesn't pop up there, but it's Hasnal.Harris. You can follow me there. And I hope I, I'll have more content coming up. And um, that will, um, of course, um, will be my public account. You can follow me there. and you know, see my progress or what's my preparation yeah. for it. And, yeah. And be my chicken so. rice. <laughs> okay, so that's it. So before we end up this live session, so don't forget to share, like our page, and also follow our Instagram, Pageant Trend, and also subscribe our YouTube channel, Pageant Trend. So thank you so much for staying with us. And I hope that you did enjoy our live session with Bachelor of Malaysia 2020 candidate Hazan Al Harris. And I hope you did um, learn lesson from his uh, pageant journey and life journey. So that's all for this live session. And thank you so much and have a nice day. Bye. Bye, see you guys soon.